Security is a big part of the internet. With so many potential threats, you want to make sure your web applications are secure and safe. That's why today I want to share an awesome tool with you called Bearer. Bearer is a static application security testing tool that scans your source code and analyzes your data flows to discover, filter, and prioritize security risks and vulnerabilities leading to sensitive data exposures. So what does that mean? Well, Bearer will scan your projects to check for security and privacy risks, helping you prevent any unwanted issues. It's also free to use and super helpful for teams and solo developers. It's also open source and fully customizable. Bearer has built-in rules against common security risks and vulnerabilities known as the OWASP Top 10. Bearer has over 100 rules that check for things like unfiltered user input, leakage of sensitive data, weak encryption, hard-coded secrets and tokens, and a lot more. I'm going to demo the tool to you now, showing off its capabilities and how to use it. Okay guys, so I'm going to show you how to use Bearer. Bearer is really awesome and I'm going to be testing Bearer um, on a known application called Juice Shop, which is actually um, known for its security issues and I have to source code downloaded so I can show you how to use it. So if you head over to the GitHub repository, I'll leave all the links down below. You'll find up how you can install Bearer and how to get started. Now, if you're on a Mac or Linux, you can use uh, the CLI, Homebrew, um, sudo apt, all of this, um, all of these different ways. However, if you are using Windows, you'll need to use Docker to actually get it working. Um, you can head over, download the Docker desktop and use the Docker Hub um, image here using the pull command or inside of the actual uh, UI, you can actually download Bearer, which is super useful. I'm going to be using this here to actually run it. So now if I just list out my projects here, you'll see I have Juice Shop here. Let me just list out Juice Shop. So you can see all the files in here. Um, and you can see there's a bunch of different files in here from Surfer TS all the way down to AppTS and many more files in here, which all have many flaws and security risks, which we are going to snoop out using Bearer. So if you come over and you're using Docker like me, you can run this command here. If you're using Bearer, um, from the CLI and you're on uh, Mac or uh, basically Linux, you can actually just run bearer scan once you've installed the project. You can actually see here they have the uh, repository for the juice shop on their GitHub as well. So if you want to follow along and actually do this, you can. The links will all be in the description down below. So you can see here, you can just run bearer scan if you're on a Mac or Linux uh, based machine, but we're in Docker. So we need to run this command here. So let's just open this up and let's just type this out. So I'm just going to say docker run dash dash rm fee. And obviously, don't forget you need the image installed on your Docker instance. Um, you can do that in here, images, and you can see I've got this image here. You can search for bearer or download it from the link. Again, follow this, all this stuff here. So back in here, docker fee mv, and then we need the path to our project. So I'm just going to pass in d. Um, and then we're going to have slash and then we're going to pass in projects slash juice shop colon and then we need the temporary scan folder um, which we're just going to call temp scan which will be on the obviously docker instance and then we can actually tell it the version of bearer we want to use so we're just going to call bearer um, slash bearer and I'm just going to leave it at as it is this will use the latest one I have installed I'm going to call scan slash tmp slash scan now this is going to run I'm actually going to make this oh I've lost it I'm going to hit enter and this is going to basically start running the thing it's going to load everything up and then it will start scanning and you'll have a progress bar here I will let this run and we'll see what it comes back with for us to actually uh, analyze and see the privacy and uh, security risks that juice shop poses okay guys so it's now finished and you can see we have this massive dump in our console of all the different errors and uh, security risks that we have so you can see here that at the bottom here, you'll find the basically the overview where we have 59 checks made, 40 findings. We have zero critical um, issues or security risks. We have 16 high risks, 24 medium, zero low and zero warnings. 
So you can see these are all here. And then if we go up, you'll see we'll find all of these here. And if we scroll all the way up, you'll see we start off with the medium and then head into the high risk issues here where you can actually see a bunch of different ones. Now, there is another awesome feature about bearer and that's it's actually when it dumps this stuff it doesn't just tell you there's some sort of risk or security or privacy error it also gives you a link to tell you about it so let's just copy this link open up our um, browser and just paste it in and here you go you can actually see it gives us the error we've just had the description of what it actually is and ways we can actually fix it here so you can see we it tells us to use environment variables in instead of just having it um, hard coded inside of our um, system there basically and if we go down here you'll see there's also like a local storage one if we just copy this and paste this in instead you'll see it's a similar thing here we get a description and um, a way to basically fix this issue um, and it tells you all about it here there's a bunch of resources and everything associated with it which is really awesome um, and useful to know about so this is really cool, especially when you're working on a local system and you're getting it all set up. But a lot of teams will be pushing their code to GitHub, which will then be basically deploying it to Surface. Now you can actually set up a GitHub action inside of here to actually basically tell you if there's any errors before it goes over to staging um, or whatever before it goes into master. Basically, as soon as you push your code, it will run an action that tells you what the issue is. Now we can come in here and we can actually basically set up a new workflow, but we're going to do it from the actual code. Now, inside of our project folder here, what we can do is actually set up a GitHub action and GitHub actions basically automate stuff inside GitHub. So we're just going to select this new file here. Now, these files have to be in a GitHub forward slash workflows folder. And then we can call this one, for example, bearer. YAML. Now these uh, YAML files is how it reads it and uses it. So you can follow this. You can name this workflow whatever you want, but you need to follow this same um, path. So you can see here we're in GitHub and workflows and we have the bearer.yaml file here. Now in here, what we want to do is basically just give this a name, which we're just going to say bearer. We can then say how we want this to be pushed. So we want to say what on push on a branches off and we're using master for this um, but you can use whatever branch you want um, to use you can use main you can use your staging whatever branch um, works for you also you should probably spell branches correctly and don't misspell it like me otherwise you're gonna have some issues we then want to say permissions um, and set this to contents and then we can set it to be readable and then down here, we want to set the jobs. Now, the jobs is going to be what actually runs. Now, we want to make the policy check. This will be um, the name of the function. You can name this uh, essentially what you want. Um, so this is basically what the job is. Now, under here, we're going to say runs on, and we're going to say we want it to run on Ubuntu uh, and obviously latest. We can then pass in the steps we want it to take. So we're going to set the uses. And this is going to be used as actions or oh, actions forward slash checkout at v3. We then want a name. Um, and this is just going to be called run report. Then in here, we want to pass in an ID, which will be the report. And finally, we just want to say use this one more time. And the use this is we're actually going to use bearer forward slash bearer hyphen action at fee two. Now, what we're saying here is we want to use bearers built in action, which they've already done. So this will just work off the bat. You don't have to upload anything special. It's already set up by bearer. Now we could just hit save here and then that should be able to run. So if we now uh, push this and just say um, our first tests or like new changes, whatever you would commit your commit <laughs> um, and just hit sync changes. That will push it to the cloud. Obviously, if you're using a CLI or something, you can also do it. However, you would push your Git to uh, GitHub. Now, if we go back to our branch here, you'll see this is my juice shop and we go to actions you will see this GitHub YAML here and you'll see new changes being pushed. 
it looks like I made a mistake here. I accidentally put users instead of uses here. So just make sure your spelling's on point here. This should be correct. Let's just re-push this. So um, fixed spelling mistake. Um, correct comment and sync the commit and sync the changes. There we go. That should now push it and we should this time be able to go back here and see this here so you can see it's now running and it's actually running the policy check which we set up this will run through and we'll wait for this to basically run you'll see here it's going all the way through get everything so now it's running the actual report with bearer which you'll start seeing all the errors and issues coming through Okay, guys, so that's now finished. And you can see here we have got the error. Now, that's what we wanted because we already know this has some issues. And you can see here we have the exact same checks, findings, and everything because it's pretty accurate. And there we go. We have all these different checks. And now you can actually run through this, which actually is really nice because you can actually just click the links to open them straight up instead of having to copy and paste them um, in here. I'm pretty sure you could do that on Mac and Linux as well. Uh, just Windows, that kind of sucks. No offense, Windows. You got but you gotta make that better. But there you go. You can actually see here, we can see all the issues we had before, and that way it will stop us getting errors and accidentally pushing something that could be a security risk to a um, um to obviously your live environments or even your stage environment still could be an issue this could prevent you from making some uh, mistakes now that's going to be it for this video guys on bearer it's super awesome and i highly recommend you check out their documentations here they have a quick start guide um all the different ways you can actually get set up and get running and how you can use the tool to its fullest there's a bunch of different uh types here you can see there's you can even set up your own custom rules um, with patterns, languages, triggers, all of this in there to help you um, set up uh, your own system. So if you know what you're looking for, you can set up your own rules um, to prevent any security risks before pushing to a live environment. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out Bearer. All the links will be down below and make sure you just just have a have a play try it out and let me know what you think down below in the comments but that's going to be it for this video don't forget to leave a like if you're new around here smash that subscribe button and i will see you in the next video peace out